Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. I've done a lot of gardening this fall. You're kind of in the sweet spot. Uh, the, the ground is really warm. The days are definitely feels like fall a little bit. So we're heading in towards that direction. And plants, they know what's happening. You're starting to see the, the green starting to fade. So the carbohydrates that are stored up in the leaves are now starting to migrate back down. The roots are, are starting to form and they're, they almost hibernate like a bear or squirrels, and they're, they're taking in more nutrients and they're storing this to get through winter in their root structure. And so if you know this is how plants actually operate, you this is a great time to plant because you get this extra set of root growth, especially on larger plants. And so I put in quite a few ornamental grasses, some nandinas, mums, of course, love mums. They're in full bloom right now. And so they are looking fantastic. Oh, my goodness. You put them in the ground uh, 10, 14 days ago, and already you can see them pushing new growth, new leaves. You can see them rooting. They've adapted really well. One of my insider tips, if you're planting new plants into your own gardens, here are some things that I do that seem to really help plants this will, this will up your green thumbs in a, in a big way. One, every plant I put in the ground, I sprinkle a little bit of Aqua Boost crystals at the bottom of the plant. These are soil polymers that absorb uh, kind of like 10 times their weight in water. So they hold the moisture there. And then as these polymers absorb and then shrink and release the water and then absorb more water and then shrink, they keep the soil... Uh, open, the pores open so the roots can get through it. So it keeps that soil from compacting right back down. They're polymers, so they hold moisture around the root ball. This is valuable in a dry climate. Secondly, Aquaboost crystals, there's something I make here at Waters Garden Center. I've, I've infused them with mycorrhizal fungi, and so they help to colonize your soil. They help to enliven your soil. They help to bring your soil back to life with naturally occurring fungi that plants just love. They, there's a symbiotic thing that happens with, with mycorrhiza that, that help the plant root. And so when they see this, they're going, whoa, this soil's this has got it going on. I'm going to start rooting out. It's got to be good to grow. Let's start rooting out here. And so it tricks the plant. It doesn't trick the plant. It works with the plant to help it to start sending out new root hairs. Second, after I'm all done planting a new plant or any stressed out plant, I will have a two-gallon watering can of Root and & Grow. This is a composted steeped tea uh, that it's a bunch of organics that the plants respond to. It's like a, a, it's like a milkshake for plants, only it looks looked and looked like a milkshake. Smell, it doesn't smell like fish poop. You, know, you, you folks that are into fish emulsions, you know what that is. It looks like that without the stink but it operates the same way. What it does is you surround the roots with this root and grow, and then it stabilizes the plant so it stops going into transplant shock, helps it stabilize, and they just start to go, you know, life may not be so bad here in this new place I've been put. I think I'll start growing. And so I'll use the plant protector when I first put the plant in, and I'll follow up about every two weeks until I see the plant stabilized. So I've given my plants uh, the, the, the aqua boost at the bottom, and then I've watered it in. This is an additive. It's like a really thick syrup, the plant protector. I'll water, add that to my watering can, and I'll water things in at least twice. It looks like all my plants have stabilized. They're no longer in stress. They're starting to root and to grow. And so this is probably the last time I will give them the root and grow. And then you just count on your fertilizers and your soil prep and all that stuff you did to put the plant in the ground. I'll let that take over at that point. But plants, they want to die 
when you first put them in the ground. They want to go into shock. They're in, in the, this is like open heart surgery and brain surgery at the same time when you put a plant. You take a this home that it's known its entire life, this grower's five-gallon bucket or grower's plastic pot. You rip it out of there. You damage some roots. You put it in a soil it does not know, and it's going to go into shock. It is not going to be happy. It's like you stepping off that... Remember when we used to fly around the country? It was so exciting, so fun, so exotic. I haven't done that this year, but I hope to in the future. I hope to get back into airplanes. But you would landed to Phoenix, and the temperature in the plane is uh, just just perfect. You've had your latte or your your bag of Pringles or whatever they chucked at you, your bag of peanuts in the forehead when you're when you're enjoying your soda in the back. Uh, you get off the plane. And you were comfortable, and you hit 110 degrees, and it just like hits you in the face, going, "Gah!" Well, plants do that in reverse with uh, it's this grower's pot. When you put it in the ground, it's going, oh, "I have no idea what's going on. I'm going to go into shock now, and I might die, or I might not. I'll decide later." So the the Aqua Boost crystals and the liquid root and grow are kind of my one-two punch to stabilize things. It takes some pressure off because I don't have to water as much because of the AquaBoost crystals, and really because it also encourages new root growth so quickly. And so I'm doing some planting now. It's a great time. This is just the peak window. You are in a sweet spot. Fall is for planting uh, for especially bigger trees, a new, new aspen, a maple, a shade tree, a fruit tree, a big evergreen, a privacy screen. This is a tremendous time to plant. And then, of course, all of your fall flowers. You get lots of perennials coming in. So we had echinacea show up, galardias, mums, pansies, snapdragons. There's a whole series of plants that look their best in the fall of the year. And this is the time when they prefer to be planted. So right now, my container gardens, anything that looks rough, even remotely, I am ripping that sucker out going, okay, you got, you were hot a little bit ago. I mean, and you're, you're flopping over, you've got brown tips, or I am looking to get rid of the summer stragglers and open up space for my winter, my fall and winter rock stars. It's a whole series of plants that do not like summer. But boy, do they love the mountains of Arizona when it's cool out, when the nights get frosty, with a little bit of snow. It loves the season that is about to come. When the fall colors first start to show up, that's when you put in. That's when you put the pumpkin by the front door. That's when you put mums out. That's when you put asters out and echinaceas. This whole decoration type of, of mentality in the gardens. So I'm trying to decorate, look for places where I can add some color. Let's face it, some things are just worn out. Annuals are meant to be rock stars, just grow like crazy, bloom over the top for an, a season, an annual, for one year. And then it just fades out. It can't do that nonstop all the time. It just wears itself out. And so you're seeing some of your plants are just tired. They're just, they can't do it anymore. And so I'm going, okay, don't do it anymore. Here's my compost pile. Here you go. I'm putting a new thing in. Here's a brand new mum, and it looks fabulous. Uh, some some I don't even, secret, I don't even plant to them. <laughs> just put them in the bucket, in the grower's pot. I just, either I'll, I'll sleeve them, I'll put them in a pot that's there, and I don't, don't take them out of that grower's pot. I just put them in there for a while. Or I'll just put them on the on the patio by the front door, the patio or, or a deck. And I just enjoy the blooms for the next two months. It's just, it's, this is a great time to be planting. And you'll get a lot of value out of your plants right now. Garden centers have, have planted, let's say trees. We planted those a year, two years ago. And now they finally flushed out. They flushed out this spring and you've gotten the same cost to you from last spring to, the, to now, but now you've got all that summer growth from the farm. I mean, you've got an extra two feet on aspens. They just look really good. And so you get more money, more value, more plant for the garden dollar by fall by planting in the fall. Same with some of your perennials. Perennials, uh, they grow faster. When you plant them last spring, we plant them last fall, last spring, um, 
And now they've just flushed out and they look so good and full. So you get a bigger plant. That's why moms, you get a mom for under 10 bucks and it looks great. Uh, whereas in the spring, it's like a, it's like a green thing, green blob in a bucket. And yeah, same cost. It's not in bloom yet. Now they're all in bloom. Lots of value with your fall planting. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden companion plants for September are raywood ash, Russian sage, honeysuckle, and ivory feathers pampas grass. Ivory feathers is a dwarf pampas grass that blends perfectly into desert landscapes. The ivory plumes reach overhead height for architectural style around patios and ponds. Well suited as a visual barrier or hedge in the far reaches of the yard. You will find only the brightest grasses here at Waters Garden Center. Shop in store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about that maybe we can feed off of and, and learn from? And if it's happening to your neighbors, it's probably also, quite honestly, going to be happening in your backyard. So that weed, that flower, that grub, that blooming perennial, they're, they're blooming throughout the neighborhood. So I think there's some value in uh sharing that across the airwaves. So welcome into the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, so it's been nice to get away with you, your your grandkids on the lake. Mm -hmm. And I might say, we have a one-year-old schnauzer. Yes. Miniature schnauzer. This guy's only gal. <laughs> 10 pounds, 11 pounds, something uh, like that. 10-ish, somewhere in there. So a little thing, this dog lives <laughs> to boat she i mean does not, love the boat loves going on the boat loves swimming loves jumping off the boat <laughs> loves you got to watch her she, she'll jump out at the marina to just go greet people she'll just she'll jump on your boat if you're going out because we're <laughs> stopped this dog i mean i never thought a schnauzer would be that mm, happy who knew swimming around you always think labs and that type of thing but she loves it we also have a black lab, Vincent, Vincent Price, a Labrador, about, is he nine or 10 right now? He's, He's nine. Nine. So, nine of course, labs love, you got their life vest. He'd just sit there and float and sleep if he could. If you served him <laughs> dinner out on the lake, he would love that. But, then, you know, the, the schnauzer keeps up. Mm -hmm. Right. What's really funny is when the schnauzer crawls up on the lab's back. She tries to get ah! a free ride. Ah! Yeah. Oh, my God. She's always trying to get a free ride off of that board. Oh, yep. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this is about garden questions, not about dogs in the water. True. And which one's better? <laughs> we'll do garden questions. <laughs> yeah, garden questions. There you go. So Cassie would like to know when she should divide, dig and divide her iris and what does she need to add to the soil, if anything, in those new iris beds? Yeah, so the great question, and your timing's perfect, so now's the time you do it. You do it very late summer, early fall, and so you dig. What happens is iris, they're a root, uh, they're a rhizome, actually, and so they start growing over top of each other, and they can literally choke each other out. Mm -hmm. And so they bloomed really great the first year, the next year pretty good, the next year not as good, and then they just stop performing as well. That's a time, about every four or five years, you need to dig up all of your iris roots or rhizomes and then replant them. And what you'll do is you'll dig them up and you'll go, you'll be amazed how many of these roots are going back and forth across each other. Oops, I'm hitting the microphone. Um, they, they just choke each other out. What you'll do is you'll take the biggest, strongest, luscious ones and you'll replant those. Mm 
You'll take all the weak ones that are thin and wispy or small or short, and you get rid of those. <laughs> and now all of a sudden you've spaced it back out. You'll take that same garden bed, and you'll still have a hundred too many iris. You'll have iris all over the yard if you're not careful. So take maybe start an extra bed over there, another side of the house or something, with the extra roots you have, and then replant that current bed. Now going back to the question of what do I add to it, what's happened is the iris have used up all of the nutrients, forming all those roots. So you do want to add some more fertilizer and probably some more either mulch or potting soil to that section. And it's very shallow, maybe six inches down, if mm -hmm. that, four to six inches. So the, the roots are almost just barely underneath the, the soil. Till that area or, or double turn it as best you can. Add, your, add about a two inch layer of mulch do not use manure or it will rot your roots out. Mm -hmm. Use a compost, a composted mulch. We saw one called Waters Premium Mulch. It's made for this. Blend that into about one shovel's depth. What I do is before you add, before you turn it, add a fertilizers to it. I, I like to add two things, the 744 all-purpose plant food that we make. The cottonseed meal in that is like magic for th things that bloom. And then I'll front load it with some phosphorus. So I'll add some bone meal at the same time. Bone meal zero, ten, zero. That middle number is what forces everything to bloom. You'll get better blooms by giving iris some blood uh, bone meal. Excuse me. So all-purpose food, mulch, bone meal, turn to one shovel's depth, and then scrape open the earth. Usually I'll just open up the trench, lay down all my iris the way I want them, and then backfill about a two, three inch layer of this blended uh, uh, mulch food, uh, bone meal mixture over it, water it in, you're good for another four or five years. You will have amazing blooms next spring. So take the strongest roots. Mm -hmm. Should you trim your iris back before you do this, or does it matter? So yeah, usually you will. So what'll happen is you'll dig them up, and there'll be a lot of dead, there's a lot of dead thatchy kind of thing, mm -hmm. stuff. Peel all that stuff off. Usually I'll leave some green on top, maybe four or five inches on top of that. Just kind of narrow it down. Maybe just above a real tall lawnmower, if you're thinking in terms of lawns. Maybe a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for the strongest roots with strong, right, strong eyes or, or stems coming up. I'm going, oh, that looks good. You, you'll you know as soon as you dig them up, going, this one's beefy. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Plant that one. If it looks kind of thin or wispy, throw that away. Give it to your friends. Get, you'll have so many you don't know. You won't be able to plant them all. You'll literally have one bed will produce hundreds of iris mm -hmm. rhizomes that you'll be able to plant. Yeah. And they'll always do better if you divide them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another tidbit, too, if they've got lots of different colors to them, all iris eventually, with age, revert back to what we call Prescott purple. <laughs> they just have this genetic thing that iris do. They go back. It was a bright apricot color, repeat bloomer. You paid big money for it, but eventually, after 10, 15 years, they all cross-pollinate, and they start to revert back to purple. Prescott purple. Good to There's know. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a pretty, it's a pretty oh, purple. Yeah. Yeah, great plants for the yard though. Very drought hardy, tough. tough Animals don't eat them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, Ron would like to know what to do with his aspens. He's got some with some pretty severe black spot going on. Wants to know: Do I treat it this time of year? Just wait till next year? Yeah. What's your opinion? So I love it when people ask my my opinion. Hmm. It's great. As long as it's not I, me. I never get it at home. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, aspen, black spot on aspen is very common. You'll just go in the forest and you'll see this naturally occurring. It's a bacteria that's eating the sugar in the leaf. The secret's going to be clean up, clean up. It's, mm -hmm. Clean up is, is everything. Don't, don't keep those leaves around. Don't let them lie around. As soon as they turn color, they're going to fall on the ground, rake them up, throw them away. Don't compost them. Just get them off your property, throw them in the trash, get them, get them out of there. Um, and now, can, is there something you can do to help them for next year? Yes, there is. One, fertilize this fall. Sometime in the next month, fertilize with the all-purpose plant food. That's going to set the stage for the spring bud, the new leaf buds, to form better for next spring. Now you get a nice flusher growth. I would spray after they're done leafing or dropping their leaves. Spray it with revitalize the whole plant around the ground. Just spray everything. 
uh, and you're killing off any of that extra spore and it makes the plant more robust. Mm -hmm. The real secret is next spring when they just start to leaf out. So you can see the new curly cues are coming out. Spray it right then with Revitalize again. And now you're going to come out of this next spring. No black spot. Nice green growth. Good deep color. It's going to be a great tree that you'll love instead of a burdenous thing that right. it's always got a leaf spot. Dropping leaves. <laughs> okay. So good to know. A little bit of work to do there. So Ashley would also like to know, is it too early to be putting in those pansies and violas and snapdragons or is the timing okay? No, just helping a customer right before the show, helping a customer. She had a cartload full of yellow and white pansies. Mm -hmm. They went, great. She's new, new to here, new gardening. Mm -hmm. She had a couple failures. She goes, I'm just not sure, but it seems like I should. I want them. They're pretty. I need, need some color. Mm -hmm. I went, your timing is impeccable. By putting in those cool season plants now, they'll root out instantaneously. They'll actually become quite chubby before Thanksgiving or whatever. They've mm -hmm. got a lot of growing season ahead of them, and they'll keep that fullness and that color right through winter. So it's a great time to plant those. If you're to wait till your geraniums finally die at Halloween, well, now the, the soil starts to, to get cool. It's not, not as much growing time left. And so they'll, they'll grow. They'll, they'll be in color, but they won't be as full. By putting them in now, they get fuller and more colorful, and you'll enjoy them more through in January, February, next March, April, May. They'll just look better. So timing, perfect. That's good. Great question this week, folks. We'll be right back with Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion plants for September are raywood ash, Russian sage, pampas grass, and gold flame honeysuckle. Gold flame honeysuckle is the perfect vine to cover a trellis, arbor, or a fence. Also works well when pruned to form a dense shrub. Purple to deep pink flowers open to sweetly fragrant golden yellow flowers throughout summer and fall. Deer and javelina proof and oh so easy to grow. Shop the most fragrant vines in store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. A couple things I'm doing for my own gardens uh, that, that I'm trying to get things ready so they look good for the winter to come. Now we've, we're just going into fall. So I think it happens is it that next week. It's, uh, it's officially autumn. And it's a great time to plant, great time to watch things grow. You're going to see the fall colors starting to change. Already in Flagstaff, you see a little, that first edge, the sumacs are starting to show some orange color. The aspens are just starting their fall gold colors. In another two weeks, it'll be full on. Everything is in you know, fall, what, what you all are famous for up in Flagstaff, the White Mountains, that, that wonderful rifts of whole mountainsides of aspens, just beautiful. I can't leave you out, Williams. I know you've got aspens too. We have them in Prescott as well. Prescott is Aspen Creek. I could walk there from my studio, right? It's right there. So they grow wild throughout the mountains and they just look so good in the autumn of the year. Some things I'm doing to prep for this season. One, I just mowed back my thyme lawn. So I've got this beautiful evergreen thyme, creeping thyme lawn. It's maybe four or five hundred feet. It's not huge. It's not meant to be played on. The dogs, they seem to like it, but it's just pretty and it softens up the patios. It just looks good. I mow it about twice a year, once in the spring and, and, and right now. 
And so what I'm trying to do is mow it back. I've fertilized it with the all-purpose plant food. There's a 744 food that I put on there, watered it in, and now it will start to grow new growth. Again, fall is a great time to, your plants are growing actively. So I'm going to fill that out, but what I, it was starting to get uneven. It's grown so much that it looked less lawn-like and more garden-esque when I want it to look like a lawn. So I mowed it back, fertilized it, so now it will start to flush out and be more even as I go into the cooler season. So I got a six, seven, eight weeks of, of nice weather growing season for time. So I'm taking advantage. I'm using this season uh, to cut it, to trim it so it looks more manicured through until next spring. And that's the only, the only thing I'll do. I only mow it twice. I water it once a week, maybe, when I remember. I hope. <laughs> it's so tough. Creeping time is so hardy. And when the dogs roll around in it, they smell like thyme. You got to love that. The second one, I'm trying to desperately keep up on the weeds. Weeds are growing like mad. Spurge and tumbleweeds and Everything is growing fast right now, including your weeds. So you don't want these things to go to seed on you. You want to keep those seed out of there. So I'm trying to, to kill off weeds while they're young. I'll hoe them up. I'll spot them with a the weed killer, so burnouts. And there's some organic weed killers we have here that work really well. But don't, don't get tired of gardening where you kind of let these things get ahead of you and now it's way more work come when they start to germinate come back at you it also as it cools down now i'm talking the end of october november uh if you've got a lot of weeds weed killers don't work now you're actually physically going out there and pulling these things up and that is not that is not fun gardening in my world I'd rather go out once a week and spot treat things as they start to emerge. So I'm really trying to be conscious about keeping up with the weeds so they don't get ahead of me. As we cool down, weeds just stop growing. And so if your yard's cleared, it's cleaned up, it just stays looking like that for months at this point. Yeah, after the first of the year, maybe you'll see some goat heads and not goat heads, the foxtails and dandelions, that, you know, bull thistle, those things will start showing up. But that's months and months and months away from now. I want to keep it, I want to transition my gardens to look good and keep going. Same with that cucumber that stopped producing, the peppers that are just overgrown. You've got too many. I can't deal with so many. Start replacing some of those summer vegetables with winter vegetables. You can harvest broccoli and spinach and lettuce and broccoli and cauliflower. And there's kale. There's so many choices you can play with that love the cool that's coming. You'll harvest broccoli for Christmas dinner. But you have to start planting that now. You have to start transitioning now. It's all about the season, working with the seasons, not against the seasons that brings on garden success. Your, your, your Thanksgiving guests will be wowed that you picked your own salad in the back gardens and it's already been frosting. They killed off their tomatoes a month ago. They're going, you can still garden now? I'm going, yeah. I listen to Ken Lane. He's the mountain gardener. He's on every week. He gave us this advice back in September and it really worked. And it does, working with the seasons. But as a gardener, you're always trying to think the season ahead. For, for So I'm thinking through fall, end of autumn, and first of winter right now for my gardens. And so I'm trying to introduce some color. So those petunias, they look kind of beat up and yellow. And the, the leaves, they just haven't bloomed as nice as they did two months ago. I'm pulling those out. And I'm putting pansies and violas and uh, snapdragons and the fall and winter color in. You can have flowers year-round here. We're mild enough. Most of us, okay, you high-altitude folks, the Groom Creeks, the Highland Pines, the Williams Flagstaff, you know, White Mountains, okay, you're extreme. But everyone else, the Paysons, the Kingmans, the Prescotts, the Prescott Valleys, the Sedonas and Cottonwoods, we can have color all year round. And you should move down here too. It's God's country right here in the, the perfect growing area. We'll be back in just a moment with more garden tips and tricks after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Waters Garden companion plants for September are Russian sage, pampas grass, honeysuckle, and raywood ash. 
Raywoods are superior shade trees for wind and drought locations. Plant as a single specimen or in a grove for more widespread shade on hot south and western exposures. Dark green foliage forms the perfect round head with leaves that turn a magical wine red through autumn. We sell only the prettiest shade trees at Waters Garden Center. Shop in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Safe, natural, organic fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week, and this segment's just about what's going on in her gardens. What is she doing? What is she seeing? What, what clients is she helping? What is she designing? And I think it's good to get that different perspective. You talk to 10 gardeners, you'll get 15 different ideas on any given garden subject. And so we just didn't want it to be all about me, man, behind the microphone. <laughs> Here's my better, better half, Lisa. Better half. Thank you. Business partner, children, or mother of my four children, <laughs> three grandchildren, and... And many, many dogs. That's true. <laughs> and donkeys. Donkeys. No donkeys. Rats, Ow. cats, uh, gerbils, and mice over the, well, over the over years. Over the years. Yep. Yes, that is true. But right now, two dogs. That's yes. good enough. And that's good enough right now. We're trying to go to travel-sized dogs. So we went from German Shepherd. Now we're down to a 10-pound uh, schnauzer, which is yes. kind of nice. Much easier to travel <laughs> yeah, with. Much easier. But we also have Vincent, the Wonder Lab, that's probably close to... 65, 75 pounds. Well, maybe 60, 70 pounds right now. Good medium size. Yeah, he puts on, on his... weight when he works the yeah. garden center because <laughs> everyone feeds him when he's at home. <laughs> he doesn't eat as much. Right. <laughs> he's a great traveling dog. He just doesn't fit everywhere. Yeah, he's big. Yeah. yeah. So gardening wise, what you got? Uh-huh. What kind of, what's surprise us? We're listening. Right, folks? <laughs> are they the, no, I'm kidding. They are. Yes. So uh, we have at our house been redoing some of the inside. We actually painted the entire upstairs. Yeah, remodel. Which was hardcore. Quite the project. Uh, brought in new rugs and different things, trying to change it up because it's looked the same for I don't know ever. Ten. Ten years. At isn't least forever. ten. Felt yeah, like it was forever. starting to get dirty. You you moved pictures and, and the wall wasn't dusty, but <laughs> you could tell there was dust on the hooks, and dust on yeah. the top of that. It just kind of. If you t- I think you need to repaint every once in a while just to freshen everything oh, up sure. so it looks new. Sure. But along with that, we've also been changing out some of the house plants because we wanted to bring more green inside. Yeah. So it kind of made me think about house plants and um, just how nice they are in your home, what they bring to your house, help cleaning the air, just giving you something green and living inside, which is so important. Yeah. Um, so I thought I would talk about house plants. You know, you notice that I've done a lot of Zoom education mm-hmm. thing. Everything's online anymore. It's kind of actually boring. But a lot of folks are very professional Zoomers. Mm-hmm. So tech, this is conference call with a picture video in front of you. Um, the folks that have bookcases behind mm-hmm. them, they look smarter. What I find is those are all green screened. It's not really their <laughs> library. It's all fake. But the folks that have a piece of art that's interesting uh-huh. or house plants, you notice those, you know, oh, I want to be in her or his mm-hmm. office. It looks like it feels better. And it's much more professional. The, the folks who just have the gray wall behind them with a bright light, they yeah. don't look very professional. Right. So they need a house plant, something behind them to look. And they'd be a lot healthier oh, they if would, they had yeah. plants. You know, if you think about how many people are either working from home or have just been home so much more because they don't yeah. feel comfortable going out, the whole COVID thing. So how important would it be to be having those green living air cleaning plants inside your house? I think it does more. It's a living, breathing thing. It's not a puppy dog. No. Uh, but they do require some care. They, they mm-hmm. respond. 
oh, to yeah. you in the room. Plants actually do respond to you. So if you talk to them, play them music, pray over them, you know, plant them, s- s- stroke them, <laughs> shine, c- clean them up, they actually respond well for oh, you. Definitely. So I, I think there's something to that, the symbiotic thing that mm-hmm. people have with plants, especially if you've got a lot of butt time in the seat behind a computer screen, mm-hmm. how much more do you need that? This was yesterday. I had some guy I thought he was on the Death Star. <laughs> he had not one living thing, nothing but a stark white wall. I think he rented a an apartment for the day. He just <laughs> contemplated renting. That's where he was holding his... And he was uh, a professional consultant. Oh, my. Going, wow. You, you got to up your game, man. Got right. You got to. Anyway, enough right. about... Well, good to know. Uh, Zoom callers. If, so if you're Zooming... <laughs> You need something behind you, like a green plant or a piece of art. (laughs) (laughs) So things to think about, people. So I thought I would hit on some of the house plants that are just, most of them are super easy to grow. We try to bring in plants that are interesting and and useful, that can be used in a variety of situations, but that aren't going to, like, you know, I have to worry about them every time you turn around, you know, making sure they're being okay. So some of the hanging plants, hanging plants are great for uh, shelving. So if you've got that fake bookcase behind you (laughs) and you want a nice green plant hanging off of it, there are some beautiful hanging plants that you can put on there. I think pothos is probably the most common one that you see around, but it is so easy to grow. And it always looks good. It has a beautiful kind of shiny leaf to it. Um, you can get them in variegated where they're kind of green and yellow, some that are white and green, um, some that are just green, green, green. So really pretty easy one to put up there. Yes. Can I give a, a tip on just the pothos? Sometimes you get so long and stringy, like yours has ah. got this beautiful antique plant stand. Yeah. It's flowing over. It hit the ground, sort of running across <laughs> the... Uh, well, the reason it does so well is we, we give it the right fertilizer. We mm-hmm. give it uh, root and grow. It's liquid magic for, mm-hmm. for house plants. Uh, but then don't be afraid to trim those. Oh, sure. So we just trimmed it back, and now it's this beautiful Fills it plant. Fills it back out. And then mm-hmm. it starts to fill in. It's just some of these hanging plants are easier to grow than you think, but you need to prune those like you would. Right. A, a plant out in the yard. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, airplane plants or spider yeah. plants, uh, both kind of go by both names. Super easy to grow, fun to grow. Nephitis, which the other name is an arrow plant, is another one. Kind of a little bit lighter green leaf to it. Of course, your ferns. Yeah. Everybody, if you've got a nice humid house, a great spot for ferns. And then there are a couple of um, succulent type plants that also hang. My favorite one being the fish hook. Oh, it actually looks like little fish hooks but coming not, up. But without the barbs. That right. Get into your, yeah. And the other one is called donkey tail, which is just a really nice, cool, thick-looking succulents that they just like to grow long and drape over. Fun to have. If you have a low light place, so maybe it's an office without a lot of windows or a, a dark hallway, something like that. So some some plants that will do really well in that kind of location. So your Sansevieria or mother-in-law's tongue will do well. ZZ plants, uh, Chinese evergreens, and the Spathophyllum, also known as peace lily, would do perfect in those kind of low light areas. So a basement with a north-facing window, it's kind of darker. (laughs) That's where those things They would shine in that. They would do really, really well. And if you have a, a space that has brighter light that you want some pretty things in, so the fiddly fig, which is kind of cracks me up because it's becoming real in vogue again. I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> Everything comes back around. It does, it <laughs> does. Uh, rubber tree plants, rubber plants, I guess not rubber tree plants, but those are do very well. Philodendrons do excellent. Uh, Chinese money tree does wonderful in those kind of lights. What about and, cacti? I mean, oh, of course, cactus. cacti. I mean, yeah, or tabletops or we actually have a uh, nice selection, of a variety yeah. of cactus or, or and succulents. And in aloes right. would be that way, mm-hmm. yeah, kind of that whole succulent looking, uh, sex southwesterny looking thing. Mm-hmm. So right. they aren't big and you know showy like fiddly leaf fig, but true, uh, they're pretty. But they're pretty and very easy to take care of. <laughs> Super easy to take care of. <laughs> yeah, so those low water plants, which is kind of where I was going next, plants that don't require a lot of, of maintenance or watering all the time. Of course, your cactus, your succulents. There again, Sansevieria, just excellent. You're maybe twice a month you're watering. 
uh, Chinese evergreen ZZ plant is a super one. It's it's one we recommend for offices so frequently because it's just such a pretty green color, and you really have to think about watering it all yeah. the time. So it's super. I might for that. say too, th- you mentioned a whole lot of things, mm-hmm. and, and the big mistake I find is they'll you go to the gr- your grocery store florist mm-hmm. and buy some that looks good off the shelf. It's been greenhouse grown, and and and, and then maybe it fails. Mm-hmm. 'Cause it wasn't really meant to grow in your house. It's meant to look good for a month and then thrown away. Right. We've sectioned all these off so that we've got like things, all the hanging things are together. Mm-hmm. All the, the, the southwestern y low water are together. So and we've got a whole lot more variety and you they're made to last years oh, definitely. in an office or in your home. Mm-hmm. Uh, with just a little bit of care, you can have great success and, and some great variety mm-hmm. with your house plants. So Lisa, yeah. thanks so much for what to do with that uh, Zoom backdrop or just to make your house feel better. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners will be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants for September are Russian Sage, Pampas Grass, Honeysuckle, and Raywood Ash. Raywoods are superior shade trees for wind and drought locations. Plant as a single specimen or in a grove for more widespread shade on hot south and western exposures. Dark green foliage forms the perfect round head with leaves that turn a magical wine red through autumn. We sell only the prettiest shade trees at Waters Garden Center. Shop in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Ouch! Oh man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. We got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. I had started the show out with, now's a good time to plant. It's really a good time to be planting hedgerows, Uh, privacy screens, big junipers, uh, living walls, because you can get so much growth. You'll get all this root growth now through the end of the year. Then it shuts down for about six weeks. Then it'll start taking off again sometime in March, into February, sometime in first part of March. It depends on your elevation. But all of us will start feeling like spring is starting to be in the air in the month of March. And so you get an extra set of root growth and more, more, top growth of that plant, more crown, more foliage, more leaves uh, next spring by planting now. Uh, This is your golden time with so much. This is a building boom going on. I've talked to many trades folks, friends that are plumbers and roofers and landscapers and irrigation folks, and they're all busy. They are just packed. Someone came in and asked, Ken, I need uh, need uh, three references for uh, irrigation. I want to want to tune up. I said, well, here's three names. And I wouldn't shop them. I would just go the first person to come out and do the work for you. Just hire them because you might not see the other guy for like six months. So just that's that's where we're at. There's a building boom. People are moving to the Sun Belt, moving to small towns. They're coming out of big cities, and they, they are coming in droves. And we're seeing it here at the Garden Center. Numbers are off the charts. I mean, double-digit growth uh, as far as plant sales go. Just people gardening. Now, Waters Garden Center, we tend to deal with do-it-yourself, backyard. I, I, I want a little bit more quality. and willing to do the work myself. And uh, some folks will come shop their trees, have their gardeners put it in. But we're kind of that do-it-yourself folks. And there are a record amount uh, of folks like that coming in. They're buying trees and shrubs and plants and everything. They're decorating their backyard and making it private, making it feel good. Well, 
if you've got that new high rise coming up, two story, three story, some of these homes are ginormous. I can't believe it. I was out at a guy that has an 8,000 square foot house. I'm going, wow, how do you even find yourself in this place? Amazing gardens, beautiful vistas out, out to Williamson Valley, way out there, uh, but beautiful homes. And they're, they're, if you got one of those coming up next to you, you kind of want to hide the bedroom, have dinner alone without them peering in, be on the back deck, be in the hot tub, just having spaces in your landscape that are, are yours. It feels like it's safe and secure, just a private garden. This is the time when you plant those. Some of your shrubs you'd really want to look at when you're doing that. Euonymus. There's several varieties or colors of euonymus. It's E-U-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S, euonymus. So there's golden euonymus, gets up about eight foot tall by eight foot wide, beautiful gold. There's a green variety, there's a silver variety. One I like, if you're especially if you're in the forested areas where you've got a lot of deer, even elk, uh, you'll look at cotoneaster or cotton easter is how you spell it. Cotoneaster is, is, grows wild, so it's a version of, of silver cotoneaster that grows wild here, gray cotoneaster. Uh, but plant, animals know, ooh, this is bad stuff. There's a defense within this, this plant that just, it's distasteful to animals. And so the one I really like is red clusterberry cotoneaster. This is a monster, it's really big, uh, but it doesn't get the disease that red tip photinia does. It doesn't have deer will eat on red tip photinia. Red tip photinia gets mildew, a cotone aster gets none of that. It gets a beautiful white flower in spring, red berries. That's the name, clusters of red berries, red clusterberry cotone aster. But very fast, dense grower. It'll easily go up to eight feet tall and eight feet wide. You're not getting through this thing. But now's a great time to plant it because they're smaller plants. You put it in now, and this thing will double, triple in size next spring just by planting now. It really, it's a game changer. So it's a good time to pack those things in. It's a great time to put your evergreens, uh, Colorado spruce, your, your Austrian pines, your Arizona cypress, junipers. One I use myself, I use Spartan junipers, like, like the Spartans, the Greeks and the Spartans, the Spartan juniper. I use that because my yard is mainly blues. I've got a lot of native junipers, manzanitas, and just oaks. And those are all generally blue colors. I wanted something really green, but equally as tough as those other plants out there in my yard. So I use Spartan junipers. It grows up to, I don't know, it's well above head high at this point, maybe 12 feet, 15 feet tall, about six feet wide. And so I use that. I zigzagged that across my, from my front patio. So folks walking by my front, front yard can't peer down in and go, hey, kid, how you doing? But I'm doing fine for the 20th time. I've got an active walking neighborhood. I love talking to neighbors, but sometimes you just want to read your paper and sip your coffee <laughs> in solitude. But I'll, I'll go out and wash a car, chat with folks. So the driveway is all open, but I want this, this secret kind of feel. It feels, it just has a feeling that you feels right. So waters are going, uh, water fountains are going, hummingbirds are flying around, little sparrows are back and forth. It's just a magical place. The front yard, the backyard's three times that. It's really, it's like not, not a fountain. We're talking ponds and waterfalls and hot tubs and grills and built-in fireplaces. And it's very nice, but it's downstairs. It's bigger. Sometimes you just want a more intimate garden. So I created this with the Spartan junipers. In front of that, I put Russian sage. It grows up about four feet tall. It wasn't tall enough to really screen what I wanted, but people can peer down or look down into this courtyard area. But I wanted to attract the eye to look at the pretty blue flowers, this beautiful shrub with spiky blues. The hummingbirds are on it. The bumblebees are all over it. It's just lots of activity and very pretty. So I draw everyone's eye towards the Russian sage, but really the work is being done by the Spartan junipers. I tag team it so that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging folks to look away where I want them to look. And it works. It works great. Uh, pinion pines. That's a great one. A native grows wild here, but it's kind of a slow grower. 
But boy, once you get established, no care needed. It's all on its own. Uh, it's just get it up to size. I'll usually put on a drip emitter, uh, water maybe once a week, fertilize it a couple times a year, really push the growth on it. Once it's up to size I want, it gets cut off and it goes by itself. Re very tough. This is the time you want to plant that, the fall of the year, so that you get that root mass on it. Uh, and then, it, then you flush more growth next spring. Most of your evergreens are that way. You're better off planting now, letting them root out so you get double the root growth and, and hardier, more uh, up top growth next spring and summer. It, it's, it really does work. The junipers, Arizona cypress is probably the number one seller by far. It's a big blue uh, up to 20, 25 feet tall by 12 feet wide. It can actually be too big. You don't want to put that one right next to your driveway. It'll, you'll lose your driveway. It gets way too big. You need a property liner or step back a little bit. But if you want a fast growing, evergreen or ever blue, most Arizona cypress are more on the blue side uh, that gets up well above head height and thick as can be. Arizona cypress is a great one. We've got an entire series of plants. Uh, it's called the privacy screen area, the screening upright evergreens that we have. We've got them all sectioned out. They're all together. You can see the different colors and textures, but now's the time to put that together. That would also be very helpful if you took a quick snapshot of what you're trying to hide with a measurement, and we can actually help you. We've got designers. They help you put that thing together. We've got planting services. They can help you put it in the ground. But, but when done incorrectly, it can look out of place, look less garden-esque, look more fence and walled-like. You want it to feel like a garden, not like a wall as far as your gardens go. So evergreens can be a little tricky to, to design in, but when done well, people just go, they just it's a feeling. They can't even describe what's going on. They just go, wow, this is a great backyard. My goodness. Hey, let's throw on a burger here. I'll take another one. That just feels great. That's what a great design can do for you in your backyard. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion plants for September are Pampas Grass, Honeysuckle, Raywood Ash, and Lacy Blue Russian Sage. Lacy Blue Russian Sage is a water's preferred perennial for its compact form that doesn't flop over in the landscape like others. The spiky blue flowers bloom summer through fall with aromatic foliage detestable to all animals. Simply stunning at the edge of dry stream beds mixed with wildflowers. Shop in store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Wondering why the grass is always greener on the other side? Well, it's probably because your neighbor used the all-purpose fertilizer from Waters Garden Center. Monsoon is right around the corner, and it's the perfect time to feed your plants. Waters All-Purpose Fertilizer is the only organic made especially for Arizona mountain soils. Don't buy a bunch of different fertilizer for your flowers, veggies, trees, or grass. This one does it all. The plants on your side will be happier, healthier, well, greener. Safe, natural, organic. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So this smoke that we're seeing throughout the West, really, has uh, it's thrown a... It's, it's affected even us here in northern Arizona, kind of all the garden centers. We all know each other. We, sh we share trucks together. We're, we're similar farms together. It's all about routing, trucking, shipping plants. You got to come across the desert right now in an air-conditioned truck or they just burn up. Plants can't take that kind of heat in this metal semi-trailer. They need to be temperature controlled. And so we're, we're helping each other. And it's a small industry. We all know each other. It's, it's, it's a friendship. Um, What's happened now at the farm level, the smoke has shut them down. They cannot even harvest. We have crops that we're harvesting right now, and they can't work the fields because it's just it's a health hazard. There's so much smoke. The farms aren't burning. It's just there's so much smoke they can't get there. So it looks like we've we're a week delayed on some shipments. I mean we still have plenty of plants, but we're still shipping plants every week. We have trucks coming. I couldn't get my truck from Northern California or from Oregon. 
So that's evergreens. And a lot of the perennials and, and uh, flowering shrubs come from those areas. Now, fruit trees are coming from those areas. Couldn't restock this week. And so they're just delayed. They're saying wind direction should change. We should get back into it. We'll probably have twice the order next week. That's just kind of the, I can't believe, I've never had this happen, where California and Oregon are burning so much that the smoke is not allowing the, the field workers to get out there and go get the plants, load them on the dock, and put them into back of semis and drive them out here. It's just a really, it's kind of frustrating. That on top of COVID, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. The supply chain is just wonky this year. I just can't believe it. So buckets, growers' buckets, plastic buckets. It, there's a disruption there between the plastics the molding machines, people to run the machines, to load the things up, to put pallet, put them on pallets, to get them on the truck, to get them to, there's disruptions. And so it's taken three times longer. At least we can get them. I think a lot of this too is a supply chain that was over in other parts of the world are now becoming localized. They're, you're just having to figure out who can make that for you. Oh, get, and you're, we're helping out. Your friends are helping each other out. So we're seeing that more and more and more. So if you're having trouble finding stuff, you can take a look online. One, you can go right to the farm. So we've got a, a partnership with Monrovia. Monrovia Nurseries is kind of the Cadillac or the Lexus of, of plant growers. They grow the, the elite stuff, perfect quality, perfectly shaped. A branch won't even be broken. You go to monrovia.com. You can look at their fields and when... If you see something you like, you've got like 2,000 acres to pick from. Uh, when you see something you like, you can throw it on our truck and it's shipped free to us. Because we've got trucks are coming anyway. And what's an extra, you know, five plants? Big deal. Costs no more to ship that truck. And so you, you can look at that. And then, of course, Waters Garden Center. You can see all the inventory we have here at the garden center right now. You can see that through Waters Garden Center at the very front.com. You know where to find us. Siri. Get, give me watersgardencenter.com, and it'll just pop right up. Okay, Android folks, Google. <laughs> Here we go. Alexa, what other names are there? <laughs> uh, you just you look for it. You can see all the plants. You can buy it, and we'll deliver it to you. We'll plant it for you. We'll, whatever it takes, we can help you with that. But it's becoming – it's just weird that smoke would disrupt – uh, deliveries of plants. Just, I've never seen such a thing. COVID was bad enough. Now it's the West is burning. Hopefully this thing will settle down and be okay. Uh, classes, while you're on watersgardencenter.com, we're, we're having a good, good rapport online. We figured out how to keep the phone from overheating. So now you can watch on Facebook through the whole class without the phone. The phone would just shut down. It was so hot. Go, I'm done. About 40 minutes in, they're out. This is an hour class. You miss the last 20 minutes. So we're getting better and better all the time with this online stuff. Uh, and hopefully you're, you're gracious enough to give us some, I don't know, be kind. <laughs> Ken and Lisa Lane, we camp out here at Waters Garden Center throughout the week. and We love talking to fans of the show. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.